But it is interesting that this even became such a topic of discussion for so long. These Russian troll factories, you know, just kept popping up in the news for the last like two and a half years over and over again. Like kind of the almost like the same story just recycled a little bit. Like now we're going to talk to a new, you know, confessions of a Russian troll is at this troll factory. And ultimately the question does really be, so if it's just about me, quote unquote meddling, which is such a vague and all encompassing term, then the argument has to be about proportionality and what the actual effect that it had was. Right. And since that's not able to be determined, like you can't quantify that then the arguments, then it's like this propaganda can really flourish. I think that's almost kind of the purpose of it. The purpose was to get to this point of drawing everything back and being like, well, no, actually the Russians just meddled. Right. And then since now that we're there, it's such a vague, all-encompassing term that can mean anything that, you know, even a leftist who's espousing views that sound similar to a Russian TV channel could be described now as Russian meddling. Or yep, and everyone's a Russian bot who echoes anything remotely um, similar to questioning State Department narratives. So, so everyone's a Russian bot, and then on the uh, on the flip side, everyone's a Soros bot that's questioning the Trump administration. So it's it's quite a disturbing predicament that we've gotten ourselves into. Where, and I agree with you, Robbie. Uh, six months ago, I thought that it was going to get better because I, you know, after the DNI report came out mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, no one really bought it. Uh, people who are really paying attention understand what a, a giant distraction this is. How could anyone really, um, you know, how could this gain much more traction later on? But, uh, you know, sure enough, people are dropping like flies um, and just wholeheartedly believing that they think that the indictments from Mueller are somehow, um, strong enough to just to just accept that there is a smoking gun as you said and and yeah. we just have now come to the conclusion that russia meddled and if you disagree with that then you're a fucking shill um for russia apparently so i i've seen tons and tons of people that i did not think would fall prey to this have fallen prey to it um and it's very sad because i thought that people had a little bit more critical thinking skills than this no, they. I think I really do think it has something to do with the duration, right, and the amount of different information from all these different angles coming at them at once. Like it's a barrage of propaganda coming from so many different directions. It really does make the Iraq War WMDs narrative seem like a oversimplified, like amateur hour propaganda mm -hmm. like deployment. And I, That's I know how bizarre we, it is. I know we've talked about this before, but I think it's really worth mentioning again, is that when Edward Snowden leaked the NSA documents, one of those documents that Glenn Greenwald reported on was how the NSA has employed hundreds, if not thousands of operatives online to infiltrate message boards, forums, Reddit threads, article threads, hijack them have multiple accounts on these threads to yep. pull people away from questioning the government, pull yeah. people away from questioning war. It just it shows did. you the level um, of entrapment online to pull people away and, and divide, you know, and, and sow discord from our government. And, and God knows how vast that operation is online. This is in conjunction with the Wahhabi troll farms. This is in conjunction with the Hasbro operations. We already know Israel has a vast amount of influence over our government as well. And think about this, the corporations. I mean, after the BP oil spill in the Gulf, Dar Jamal um, basically tracked down trolls that they had hired a PR firm to employ hundreds of trolls online to dilute yeah. the discourse about the BP oil spill. So if this is, and we already know the Koch brothers have, have several uh, astroturfing organizations as well that they employ vast amount of trolls too. So I just, what's sad about this Russia obsession is that we're forgetting about all of these other operations that I think do much, much, much more damage on behalf of right-wing authoritarian billionaires and oligarchs in this country, on behalf of multinational corporations in this country, uh, what is that doing? How vast is that? We need to think about all these things. Like, if this is really what we're going to be arguing about, Russian trolls online, then I'm sorry, but we need to broaden the discourse a little bit to talk about all these other trolls and all these other operations from several governments and corporations. But yeah, I always just think about that because that was just kind of a story that went by the wayside. And I mean, obviously that's happening on a daily basis.
it to become this narrative that somehow Russian meddling over the internet and like with a few media channels and, and networks that most people in this country don't even pay attention to, that they have that much of an effect. It just, it's just sad and pathetic that someone who's actually studied sort of the structures of the system and how it's oppressive could even remotely come to that conclusion. It doesn't even make sense to me. It's childlike, actually, that a, that a smart, educated individual could reach that conclusion, that Russia had this drastic impact on our political system and our political landscape. I just found the document. It's a GCHQ slash NSA operation, a slide about how they use the internet to, quote, manipulate, deceive, and destroy reputations. Dirty tricks that they have um, employed under the banner, of course, of fighting terrorism. That's that's what all of this is under the banner of. Um, but it's basically a couple tactics that they use to do this. Inject all sorts of false material on the internet in order to destroy the reputation of its targets. Okay, so think about what this means in the, in the era of COINTELPRO revived um, attacking Black Lives Matter activists, of course, diluting any sort of like conspiracies about the government. I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on or poisoning the well, you know, like like the the false flag stuff, the crisis actor stuff, the, the yeah. flat earth stuff. I mean, how far can this really go? So we know that they're doing that, right? Then the second tactic is to use social sciences and other techniques to manipulate online discourse and activism to generate outcomes it considers desirable. Yeah. I mean, that is just unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> negative information on various forums, taking down, like if they see like a leader on a forum who's gaining a lot of traction and, and getting a lot of people to agree with them, they'll go in, create multiple sock puppets to try to discredit that person yep. and pretend like there's like a, a flood of people who are like, no, like you're wrong. Yep. Yep. This is I what mean, they're that's, doing. Jesus, imagine what it would be like on a political forum. Exactly. Of any kind. Anti-war groups, political expression. Yeah. Um, this is what the FBI does. We already know that they're not focused on white supremacists, mass shooters, or, or any of those people. We know that they're focused on taking down Muslims, right? Infiltrating mosques and also anti-war groups. We know that that's what their, their real jam um, is Black Lives Matter and anti-imperialism. So this is what they're doing. Um, we don't know the extent of the operation. But yeah, this is just one like little slide presentation that came out of the Snowden documents. So just gives you a little bit of an insight <laughs> on what we don't know um, while yeah. everyone is hysterically telling us that Russia has destroyed our democracy. 